How did you get to where you are now in the sense of understanding this whole picture of statism or slavery? A lot of fuck-ups for the most part. That's, that's kind of how I got here. I just stumbled in. Um, no, so I was raised in, um, I would say, a politically, I guess, ambivalent house. It came up a little bit around elections, mostly from, from the father. Um, and he, he was, I think, de facto a Republican. I, I don't really know his, his political leanings, um, but definitely more right-wing, very pro-military. Um, but he would watch CNN every day. And that's something I do, not every day, but like that's where he would get his news from. Um, and then, you know, not going too much into, the, into my home life at that period, but joined the Army at 18, just trying to get, the just trying to get out of Georgia as fast as I can. I'm tired of school, so it, uh, I actually tried to join the Navy first, and they wanted me to be a nuclear engineer. And I go to MEPS, and uh, I personally think it's a depth perception issue, but they say that I'm uh, like purple green color deficient. Um, and what that means in the Navy is you have two job choices: you can be uh, a sonar operator or janitorial services. And I didn't want that. I wanted to be a medic. So as soon as I get back from MEPS, I walk next door to the army recruiter, uh, walk up to one of them and said, here's my MEPS packet. They say I'm qualified, no job, and I can only be a sonar guy, and I don't want that. I want to be a medic. Can I do that with you guys? And they take me to the back, and they pull out this big book, and they open it up, and they skim off a couple pages, and they're like, if it's after this page... You're, you're qualified for the job based on your paperwork. Medic's on there. A few weeks later, I have uh, officially signed my contract as a medic for the Army. Um, within a year of joining, uh, I deployed to Afghanistan. Um, did a lot, of, uh, a lot of personal growth in that time period, but not really any... No thinking about politics, anything like that. It's, it's a complete absence from my mind. Uh, I know I hear people bitch about Obama around me. It's, again, not not paying attention. Um, so like I said, deployed 2012 in October. Go to Afghanistan. Uh, I had my own, you know, personal goals for that uh, for that deployment. Succeeded in one, uh, the more important one. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, like nobody in my platoon, nobody under my direct care, didn't come back. And over time, after I got back. And uh, ended up being sent from Fort Lewis to Fort Drum, which is right where I met Scott, interestingly. Um, around that time, uh, things just didn't make sense. Uh, like, I, I started to become politically aware. Um, very slowly, though. Um, you know, none of the propaganda made any sense to me. And it's like, these people hate us for our freedoms. You know, we got, we got to fight them over there. So we're not fighting them over here. Pick a line. It was bullshit. I, I would think about, you know, my deployment and like, you know, we got shot at a couple times, but you know, I think anybody who's pro gun would probably shoot at invaders on their land who are attacking their homes and their people. Um, so it's like, yeah, I can't hate them for shooting at us. Uh, you know, then you start thinking about the casualties. There's casualties on both sides. And, uh, it caused a lot of internal strife, but I still refused to, like, really delve into it. Um, so I started watching instead Parks and Rec. Uh, I'm laughing, I'm having fun with this goofy show, and there's this character that I can't get enough of. This Ron Swanson guy. I'm like, what the hell is a libertarian? I can do whatever I want? That's the attitude I've had since I came back from deployment. Like, no, nah, I think you all can fuck off. I'll get it done how I want to. Uh, and it'll be the right way. And nobody's going to interfere. And it'll be great. And I can just be a good worker. Uh, it was after deployment I started to be a really bad soldier. But a really good worker. So, watching the show. And one day I'm just like, I wonder... Let's see what these libertarians are about. So I start looking up libertarians. I'm like, libertarian podcast. What do I find? I get Dave Smith. Uh, I get Tom Woods and Lions of Liberty. And at the time, I have interest in one 
because I also watch his other podcast, uh, Legion of Skanks. So a uh, big Dave Smith fan. Uh, and from there, it was honestly pretty quick. Uh, I ended up getting out of the army around that time. I moved in with a friend. Uh, I'm watching a lot of Louder with Crowder, a lot of Ben Shapiro, and then I keep having, like, once a week I'm watching part of the problem. And it was the war shit that pissed me off, because all the, like, Crowder and Shapiro, they're one to inflate conflicts, they want to start new ones, and I'm just like, okay, well, fucking go. You want, you want these people dead so bad, go fucking do it yourself. And nobody, all these, all these pro-war people, nobody's going over to the Middle East and talking to anyone who lives there. Spoiler alert, if you haven't been there, they don't give a fuck about you. The only reason they shoot at soldiers is because we're there. If, if we didn't have a military presence there, they wouldn't understand the concept of America existing for the most part. Not because they're too stupid, but because they just don't care. They have their own lives and their own time. They, th they want to just live their life and die peacefully like I think anyone else did. Uh, so yeah, um, and about six months after I officially like started calling myself a libertarian, uh, I <laughs> started calling myself an anarchist because uh, Nick Sarwark run, ran the LP, and you know Gary Johnson's a fucking goofball. Joe Jorgensen just—it was a spectacular failure of a campaign in every regard except for her vice president uh, partner it was the only good part of that campaign. Um, and then, you know, started, started talking to Scott almost every day for several hours, and, like, we just kind of bat back and forth with politics, and, uh, just kind of solidified as an ANCAP, and here I stand.